Las Vegas! Acknowledge me! Brickmaker subscribers, acknowledge this video. And please like and subscribe. This video is just inspired because it's WrestleMania weekend and I am very excited to be watching WrestleMania. If you guys are a fan of wrestling, please put down your predictions to the matches below. I'd uh, love to reply and have a discussion with you guys. Without any further ado, can you beat Fallout New Vegas as Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief? When thinking about how you would play the game as Roman Reigns, a couple things kind of came up. Obviously I picked the name as Roman Reigns and I tried to make the character look as close as I can with this. It's I'm not very good at it. You can see the stats here. Strength of 9, Endurance of 9, Intelligence of 9, Agility of 2, but Charisma of 1 and Perception of 1. For a very, very simple reason. You are a sniveling little suck-up sellout full of suffering succotash, son! The skills are just the best suited for kind of an unarmed build, barter medicine unarmed, and also skilled and heavy handed, again nothing to do with Roman Reigns, just the best thing for this character. This armour I believe looks the closest as it kind of mimics the, the Samoan tattoos that he has, and this is the first instance of the, the methods I'm going to be using in this playthrough. The throwing spear will be acting as Roman Reigns finisher. This spear. Now, if you've seen Norbert's video about beating the game of only throwing spears, it's simply just, it's possible, but my god, I do not have that kind of time on my hands to do that. So instead, I decided, what is Roman Reigns the most famous for as a tribal chief? What is his biggest weapons that he's got in his bloodline faction? The spear will be used as the finisher. Which means I'll be using it for the big characters, the main characters in this story that i got to take out. In terms of everything else, I'm leaving Good Springs, making my way through the Prim Pass, um, get taken up by the Death Claw really quick. For some reason I just forgot he could see me, despite his name being blind. But, second attempt, I'm able to get around him here, no problem. I make my way to Novak, where I can pick up a Power Fist, as I will be using simply the Superman Punch. If you know, it's pretty much Roman Reigns' set up to the finish. So for the majority of characters in this game, I'll be using the Superman Punch. The Power Fist. And that means any Power Fist or glove faced kind of weapon is, you know, at my disposal. I'm lucky and Cliff's got one in stock. And I mean, out of all the weapons and the, the courier stash that I got at the start of the game, I have more than enough caps to be able to purchase it. It's here where I'm showing you the kind of the, the main attack, the jump and the punch with the nice, the tribal, again, tribal raiding outfit, makes sense, he is the tribal chief. And you better believe that. I mean, that's his old catchphrase, but it's, it's still one of them. I decided to test my Superman punch on these Viper gunslingers. And again, power fists, a very powerful weapon. It's, uh, I'm not going to be struggling too much for taking out enemies. I make my way over to Boulder City as I've got some cans to take care of. Now, they're part of a tribe, a pretty big tribe, and there's only one tribal chief. But there ain't no way that the tribal chief can forgive the great cans who hunted me down and helped Benny shoot me in the face. So, there's only one thing that can be done about these people within my bloodline who betrayed me, and that's to take them out. Superman punch and spear all the way till the end. In my head, the what Roman Reigns is doing here. Now this is going to be released on WrestleMania XL weekend. And Roman is tag teaming with The Rock, the final boss. And he's going to be facing Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And the winner of that match decides the rules for his final fight with Cody Rhodes at the main event of night two. And this to me... He's doing this right before, right before he arrives in Philadelphia because this, this is his training to get himself ready for Cody. And I believe that if Roman Reigns watches this video before he faces Cody Rhodes, he will win. He will beat him and forever be the tribal chief. Okay, that's enough backstory for this video. 
We head up to the strip. I've got plenty of caps at this point to get in. And I speak to Victor to go and speak to Mr. House. At this point, I'm just trying to do my best so I can get as many caps as I can. Because I'm sure many of you guys know there's a certain power fist that is... It's a lot of fun to use in this game and it's a lot of caps so um, I didn't put any luck in this build so I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Um, snow globes. I speak to Swank and tell him to acknowledge me as well and that if he wants to be a wise man he better go let me speak to Benny one on one. Confronting Benny is the same as always. I just start swinging so he can't catch me in the dialogue and I show him exactly who the chief is. I also forgot to use a throwing spear at this point. I don't know why. I do apologize. Fulpe says that I need to acknowledge someone called Caesar. And I'll keep that in mind as I go to speak to Mr. House. And he shows me off his toys. They're pretty cool toys. Pretty cool destruction. But I'm not really interested at this current moment as i got to go see the Silver Rush. Because as I said, there is a lot of caps I'm still going to make up to get my special weapon. My trip to the Silver Rush goes the same as anyone's trip to the Silver Rush. I throw in a stealth boy and I just start stealing. And I try and sell as much as I can to the Gunrunners as I'm trying to pick up the two-step goodbye. Unfortunately, at this current moment, I didn't have enough. So I thought, I'll just wait, get the, the caps back. But Malcolm Holmes decides to, uh, to creep up on me and, as simple as it is, acknowledge me, Malcolm. I'm feeling a little bit oozy, so I decide I'm going to make my way to Cottonwood Cove. And it's here where I realise that I'm going to probably find my biggest supply of throwing spears in this game. Now, you can't really buy them. I think Mick sells them. And he did it when I went and looked. And I think at most he can sell two or three. So again, from the Nerbit video, I remember around about here, there's a lot of legionaries that are just camping out. And they, a lot of them carry throwing spears. Now... In his video, he pickpocketed them. I've not got the patience, so I'm just going to sneak critical. Doesn't bother the Legion, we're all good. I arrive at Cottonwood Cove, and I make my way over to the boat. On my way, I think I was looking at my phone, and I actually dropped into the water. And I randomly get, I don't know, just watch yourself. All right, no worries, dude, I see you. You're a big man, you're a big guy. I make my way to the, the fort, I agree to disarm, and make my way up the hill. Passing through the fort, it's here where I, I hear what happened with the Legion, what their goals were. And also I look for throwing spears and can't find any. But I learned that the, the Legion is built on the conquering of many tribes that have all been put together. But who am I? I'm the tribal chief. So by the end of this game, this Legion is going to be all mine. Believe that. My meeting with Caesar goes, you know, as normal as always. And I decided I'm going to try and pickpocket him to see if he's got throwing spears. And I had no idea that if you even attempt to pickpocket Caesar, he just immediately goes hostile. You don't even get the look in his inventory at all. So, all right. That, again, another thing I had no idea was a thing in Fallout New Vegas. So, another thing I've learned. I head down into the bunker and take out most of the turrets and robots with the power fist. Well, the Superman punch. And it's here where... I luckily had just enough throwing spears to be able to take out all the generators because you can't take them out with melee but it does work with throwable objects which is nice. So luckily I had a few throwing spears left but I'm still going to have to find more if I want to be able to take out all the, the main people throughout the game. The fort's blowing up and I decide that I'm going to you know, leave now because even, even the tribal chief can't survive an exploding fort and I get sidetracked by some sentry bots. I have a quick look at Mr. House. He doesn't want to talk. Um, bit rude. I'm just saying. Just a bit rude. And I go back to Caesar and lets me know that I made the room shake. Boom, boom. Shake the room. Room? Floor. Shake the floor. Anyway, he wants me to go kill Mr. House. I'll be doing this whole playthrough solo. In memory of my cousin. And I say to head back to the Legion Raid Camp. As I said before, Nurbit's video showed this is a great place to... To pick up a few throwing spears here and there. I see this guy holding one and unfortunately he, he was only holding that one. So he had to die for one spear. I find uh, this guy sleeping and six throwing spears at this point might get me to the end of the game. So you're, you're damn right I'll be taking him out. And 
Luckily with the sneak critical and how powerful the power fist is, I'm not getting noticed by anyone despite siding with the Legion in this playthrough as I want to take over all the tribes. N it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It doesn't lower my reputation. It doesn't knock anything out. So again, a very nice quick method to get throwing spears. It might have been smarter to keep them alive and just try and pickpocket them so I can come back and get them later, but eh. Eh. Who's got time for that? I work 10 times less than these other YouTubers and I get paid 10 times more. While I'm in the area, I decide to head over to Nelson, as this is something I'm going to have to do at some point anyway, but I need to go wipe out all the NCR at Camp Forlorn Hope. Now, I didn't think I was going to do it, but Ranger Milo, I tell him who I am. The name is Roman Reigns, and he does not acknowledge me. He doesn't acknowledge any of the bloodline. So, hey Milo, I'm just going to leave you there. But I'm going to pop right over to Nelson. I'm going to walk right into these barracks. And I'm going to speak to Dead Sea. Because the offence of not being acknowledged as the tribal chief. There's only one outcome left for the NCR. I decide that I want to use the, the getting the throwing spears tactic on the NCR base as long as I can. Run up and get a nice sneak critical without anyone noticing. And then this way I can, you know, take out as many people without having to burn through my healing supplies. I also remember to pick up NCR dog tags as they're going to be very helpful later on. Uh, when I need to get some more reputation as quick as possible for the Legion. I arrive at Camp Fallen Hope. Speak to Lieutenant Monroe, who, if you do do the Boulder City Showdown, he ends up here. And he seemed to be the, the straw that broke the camel's back. The four other normal soldiers, not a problem. I attack Lieutenant Monroe, uh-uh, I am now hated. So there's only one thing left to do, is to start swinging and take out all the named NPCs at this base. I walk in this tent looking for someone and out of nowhere, a, a, a recruit legionary has been following me here. Hey man, it's nice to get a bit of support, thanks, thanks legionary. Never noticed that before uh, while attacking this camp. And when I go into the, the big tent, the, the headquarters, I need to take out everyone except the Major. Because like I said, all the big named NPCs for some quests, I gotta finish them off with the finishing move. The spear. Um <clears throat> the spear, boom. And uh yeah, you better believe that he is nailed to that blackboard. I leave the tent and huh my my Legion friend just seemed to mm, well, oh poor guy. Anyway, go back up. Uh, completely wiped out all the major guys here, and this trooper is still standing at his sandbags. Like, I'm gonna, I gotta guard this door. I gotta guard this way. You can hear the shouting and the gunfire. Uh, uh I'm guarding this post. Nothing else. I'm here. Anyway, I return back to Dead Sea and let him know that I have slaughtered everyone at Camp Fun Hope. He is very satisfied. He thinks it's very nice. And he acknowledges me as his tribal chief and gives me his blade, which I will carry with great honour. I'm making my way downtown to Cottonwood Cove as I gotta go speak to Aurelius of Phoenix. I'm pretty sure I said that right. And I gotta hand in these NCR dog tags because this is the quickest way to get uh, affiliation with the Legion. And I need to get myself to at least liked um, so I can pick up a very, very special uh, weapon. But in an effort not to make too many journeys up and down Fortification Hill, because that is a true pain, I decided to go over to Mr. House and take him out, as Caesar instructed. I remember once playing this game and siding with, I think, Caesar as well, but I remember the terminal being locked and I have no idea how. Every time I come here it's unlocked, but I remember in one of the playthroughs I had to go get the keycard. I don't remember why. Um, but anyway, my ramblings aside, I unlock the the pod that has Mr. House in it. And again, Mr. House is a pretty major character. And there's only one way that we're going to finish him off. And that is with a spear. Do it with me, guys. Ooh, ah! Here we go, House. There's nowhere to go, nowhere to move. No referee's going to... 
Well, hot damn, he took one. Damn. Uh, I, I'm not even... I, Mr. House, I acknowledge you. I can't believe you took one of them. A lot of characters in this game have not. Avoiding tracking back, I decided to head over to Octolux and they're cannibals, they're evil. Even if even if they're gonna join my tribe, I don't want these people part of my bloodline. So I don't even care if they acknowledge me. I'm heading right over to Octolux and I'm wiping them out. And I don't care what Caesar's got to say about that. Because Caesar ain't gonna be the chief much longer. Because there's only one head of the table. And there's only one head that's attached to this terminal, and that's Mortimer's. Not my head. I'm the head of the table, not the head of the terminal. I head over to the dining area, and I need to do the same with uh, Marjorie, or Marjorie, or Marjorie, 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 Marjorie. Um, spear. Boom. Down. Vilified. Putting a lot of my skill points into barter and then gathering a lot of the kind of weapons I've been taking off people, I'm finally able to afford the two-step goodbye. Now I haven't put anything into luck, so critical hits aren't that common, and I also haven't put... I, I did heavy-handed, which also reduces the amount of critical strikes, so you might be thinking a lot of the things I'm paying for here for the two-step goodbye are probably not going to be used very much, but actually the explosive feature is kind of handy to not have in some situations. I stole a bunch of throwing spears off guys in the, the fort and go speak to Caesar and let him know that I've taken out Mr. House and I'm going to go off and meet the boomers. But before that I go speak to Lucius as this is a very important thing i got to get here. With 50 unarmed and being liked by the Legion you were able to pick up the heavy handed the Legion strike and um, the Legion assault is what it's called and with that you're able to do a running jump and pretty much do a Superman punch, as you'll see here on this Brahmin, bosh. I mean, two-step goodbye, Superman punch, Roman Reigns as at his full power. It's like, in WWE, it was like, before I had Paul Heyman, now I've got Paul Heyman. I've got all the tools to become the real tribal chief. I go in and speak to Pearl, and I learn that she is a chief of the Boomers. And that's just not going to be... You know, that's not allowed. She better acknowledge me. And, well, I'm going to acknowledge her. Well, I don't know where her head went, but I know it came off. But they all better acknowledge that. And the same with Loyal. Loyal's definitely a tougher fight than usual. He has a lead pipe this time. He usually had a sledgehammer, so... I don't know, maybe you have to be a higher level for him to have a sledgehammer. I'm, I'm not sure. But I decide not to vat this time and still take him out with the throwing spear. And move on to the rest of the boomers as well. I mean, the boomers are pretty difficult actually in, you know, small quarters because they block a lot. And at long range, God, they shoot you with so many grenade rifles. It's actually quite hard taking out the boomers when you're only using melee. But with Jack, I decided he might not be a leader, but he's a named NPC. So he can also take a spear to the end. And he somehow opens a door on his way down. I quickly grab the Brotherhood holotape because I'll need it for later. Go over to Dr. Yusanagi as I want to get um, some of the implants. You know, the tribal raiding outfit's not got that much DT, so it's, it's quite handy to get a little bit more. And I make my way over to Hidden Valley because I gotta go speak to the Brotherhood. And stepping away from the Roman Reigns playthrough, anytime I do a Legion playthrough, the best thing and the fastest thing that I've found is to just complete all the quests and then go speak to him because going up and down that hill a hundred times is that is what will spend most of your playthrough time i tell him the password is to acknowledge me and they immediately respect that and open the door but unfortunately the brotherhood of steel mm -mm. they they work on an elder an elder standpoint and we can't be having that there's only one tribal chief there's only one high chief Peter Maivia. So Elder Natnamara's got to go. And all these knights as well got to go. I was very surprised at how, how powerful the two-step goodbye was when taking out the Bird of Steel. I thought it would take a couple punches for, for most of them. But uh, I'm able to take out a lot of them in just one hit. And, um, you know, a couple take one or two. But I mean, that just comes down to their, their armor DT at the, at the time. 
Out of all the attacks I've done on the Brotherhood, this is probably one of the easier ones. I mean, my armor's not great, but I'm taking them up pretty fast. And I luckily stocked up on a, a lot of stim packs before I, uh, I took on the Brotherhood of Steel. So, you know, spamming stim packs as I run through and just keep swinging my super fist. Just, yeah, it, do, it don't take me too many tries to get through the Brotherhood of Steel bunker here. I enter into the main chamber where I'll find the Elder, and again, the Brotherhood of Steel Paladins don't take too many attempts to take down. The most annoying part of fighting the Brotherhood is just your screen constantly flashing because of all the laser weapons. And with the Elder, you know, he takes a good couple shots here, but it's, uh, it's not enough, and Elder McNamara gets speared right into the finish, and you can see his head stuck to that wall. <gasps> Ooh, ah! Believe that, Elder. I go speak to probably the hardest of the three, you know, bosses of the Brotherhood, Head Paladin and Harden, and again, a couple shots by the Power Fists. I could have easily took them out faster, but um, I wanted to get them with the, the spear right at the end, and it's a little bit unfortunate. For some reason, you can just miss. For no reason, 95% still miss, uh, and his head doesn't come off, so uh, in terms of spears, Ooh, ooh ah. Not quite a full one, but an ooh ah. The last head I gotta get is head scribe Taggarts, who always flees. Um, I mean, what, what a coward. He he would not be part of my bloodline. And I'm able to take him out with one big spear and one shot. Ooh ah. And I'm able to finish off the rest of the scribes and all the senior knights with just the power fist. Hit him with a Superman punch. It's in situations like this where the, the explosive feature is good not to trigger very much because it can also damage you. So if all these bodies started blowing up around me, I mean, I would, I'd probably have died a couple more times. But with that, I generate the password and activate the self-destruction feature. Blowing up the Brotherhood of Steel and probably the biggest challenge in terms of fighting I would have in this whole playthrough. It's here where I'm now going to make my way over to the Great Cans. Hitting the Legion Assault in, in third person is so satisfying. Um, it's, I mean, just look at it. Boom! They, they proper fly away as well. It's, it's a real satisfying way to play it. And you know, I've been using the third person camera a lot more, just out of variety, and I think I might try and do a whole playthrough with it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun, and you can see a lot more of the, of the character kind of movement there. But uh, despite that, Crack Cook Cook's head right off with a Superman punch. Take out all of Violet's dogs. I mean, I wasn't even planning to attack any of the fiends. I mean, they just attack you. I just wanted to make my way to the to the cans. But I'm able to knock out all the dogs just with repeating punches. Take Violet out and then make my way straight over to Red Rock. It's here where, well, taking out a gecko, I turn around for uh, an unpleasant surprise. NCR Rangers are bowing down to let me know that I done messed up and that I better acknowledge them. Well, as I said, acknowledge me, NCR Rangers. Believe that, um, what else did it say? Suckering Succotash Sun. Shield. I'm going to punch you in the mouth. Kablooey. I don't think he ever said that. Do you want fries with that? Oh, he definitely didn't say that. That's Dean Ambrose that says that. I also noticed that this is a spot where Legion Assassins also come and try and get you. So it must just be a spawn point. I thought specific like assassin groups could only spawn certain places where their faction would be found. But now I think the game just must have specific spots where they can come in and try and get you. And this must just be one of them. I mean, the great cans, I mean, you thought they were useless before, but my god, they're, they're just a hotbed. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm already vilified by the great cans for taking out Chester, but from what we've learned in one of my previous playthroughs, if you shove on a great can outfit and then start doing their quests, you can get yourself to the appropriate level or the appropriate reputation to be able to achieve the becoming the chief, becoming the tribal chief of the cans. I speak to Regis, he lets me know that I can convince Papa and I go over to speak to Jack and Diane where they're going to pretty much set me off on the quests that will get me the just enough reputation to get me to liked. I go over and grab Anders as he has been crucified which 
when I become chief of the legion, I'm definitely going to get rid of that. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not, I'm not a fan of it. I'd rather tie him to a rock, if you know what I mean. Diane's pretty happy with that, and she sends me up to deliver a package to Don Hostetler. Pretty simple task, head right back over to Diane, and at this point she's happy to speak out against the Legion for me, but there's still not enough reputation there. She does however give me another task to go over to Vault 3, which we're just doing at this point for reputation. And on top of delivering the package, I'm able to sell all the chems that I just don't use that I gather throughout this playthrough. And Motor Runner it gives you a better price than most stores for them, so it's a good place to dump them all off. With that, Diane gives me my last little bit of uh, great can reputation I can get from her. And now I just need to work on Papa Can's main quest to get it finished. I grab the journal to, not frame Carl, but you know, let let Papa know what the, the Legion's real intentions are. And Carl gets decimated in the process. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, why would you break the allegiance of the Can and the Legion if you're going to become the chief of both? And the reason for that is... Um, I don't know how else to become chief without doing it. I make my way over to Quarry Junction and I take out the young Deathclaw that's guarding the front door. And I intended to use my normal plan of Stealth Boy and quickly run through. But um, at this current moment I, I found it quite difficult. Um, every time I went in I kept getting noticed, I kept getting caught out. So I did a different tactic. Um, I've sped up the gameplay here but... I just, I had six turbo and I just kept hitting turbos and you can see here the, the death claws don't even turn. They're, they're unable to kind of keep up with you in turbo because it slows down time and you move quicker. So if anyone's out there who, who needs a quick way to get through core junction, if you've got uh, four, five, six turbos, it's a really easy way to get through without a stealth boy. Melissa agrees to speak out against Caesar for me and I head right back to Papa Cat. Papa's having a bit of a sulk to himself. He's, uh, he's worried he's going to be forgotten. <laughs> Believe me, no one's going to remember you once the tribal chief comes in. He sends me to speak to Julie Farkas, who then sends me off to Ezekiel. And I actually tried to skip this part. I tried to skip Julia, just go straight to Ezekiel. Doesn't work, you have to speak to Julia first, which is frustrating. But anyway, I go to Ezekiel, get the, the history of the Mongol Empire, and pass it off to Papa Khan, and he is... He is happy enough now to break his allegiances and build the Khan stronger somewhere else. However, that was not enough to get liked by the Khan. So what I need to do is I need to quickly level up so I can get my science high enough so I can help Jack with his recipes. I did, however, forget that Caesar notices that you broke that allegiance with the Khan and he gives me a hell of a threat. Um, for now, I'll, uh, I'll acknowledge the threat, but just remember, Caesar... I'm the tribal chief, and you better believe that with your goddamn headache. I go through a couple different kind of day cycles so I can hand in all the different quests that I've got, just so I can level myself up one more time to level 12. It's here where I'm able to hit enough medicine checks to get a little bit more XP, come back in and hand in my Brotherhood of Steel destruction quest. That gives a huge XP boost and it'll get me over to level 12. And Caesar lets us know that he has a weakness. And you should never let an opposition man know your weakness in these Game of Thrones. Not even sure what I'm referencing anymore. But I head back over to Jack. Take a mentat because I still need a little bit to get me over the science skill. And I start handing in all the different recipes. Grew delicious. And I had to hear that about five different times in a row. Grew delicious. One more time. Here it comes. Right on. Here it comes. I'm liked. Grew delicious. I go over to go speak to Papa Can, who has decided to take a nap. And now I'm going to wake him up. And I want him to know what I've been doing. He lets me know that he's very happy with my destruction of Camp Forlorn Hope. In the name of destroying the NCR. And he has decided that he will name me his heir. If he dies, the leadership of the Cans will pass to me. I will become Papa Reigns, the tribal chief of the Cans. I let him know this is a great honor and I, I, I am blown away by his generosity. And to show thanks, 
I missed the first spear. But the second one don't miss. Ooh, ah! And I take a seat in the throne of the cans. Great cans! Acknowledge me! I go over and do a little bit of shopping. I go over and speak to Dr. Yusanagi as I need to pick up the medical tools to perform the surgery. As I enter Caesar's tent, Lucius, oh he's very sad, he lets me know that he's not waking. And I let him know that the howitzer is operational, he seems pretty happy about that. I arrange for Caesar to not survive the surgery and I decide that I'm going to take his armour because it's only fitting that the chief can take it and I'm able to use my medicine skill to let Lucius know that I, I was unable to save him, I promise. I couldn't do nothing more. But he, he forgives me and gives me my next task of taking out President Kimball. I put on Caesar's armour as I am the next Caesar and Legion Acknowledge me and my open mouth. God, such a mouth breather. I go speak to Kato and let him know that I am ready to set out the plan to take out President Kimball. I make my way over to Hoover Dam and notice here that Kato speaks to a ranger for a short part of time. I mean, Kato, are you are you feeling a little? Are you feeling oozy? Or are you not feeling very oozy right now? I get a nice pan shot of uh, of Roman and notice he doesn't look like Roman at all. I make sure Kimball gets far enough in because once he starts running it's pretty hard to catch him. And I'm not taking any risk with trying to weaken him with the power fist. I'm just going to put all my vats into the throwing spears. He takes one, I mean really well, I mean that was right to the eye. But the second one plants his head straight into the wall and I'm going to make my, my quick escape away from Hoover Dam. Completing arrows on the killer and taking up President Kimball. I return to Caesar's tent, well, my tent, and let Lucius know that President Kimball is no more and that I am ready for the Battle of Hoover Dam. I arrive at the Rock's tent, I mean Legat Lannis' tent, and he lets me know that finally, the Legat has come back to Hoover Dam! I mean, that's pretty much what the Legat says, but not in those words, but I'm just summarizing. The troops on the dam were as easy as always. I mean, at this point, it's just troopers and rangers. I don't think you meet any of the veterans yet. Uh, I don't think you get them until you, you hit inside of the power plants. I take up the rangers on the water towers and face the three heavies that are in the office building. I mean, three heavy troopers all at once. I mean, it was a hard fought fight, but I'll, I'll be honest. It made me it made me remember just one, one scene from a certain WrestleMania. Um, let me know if you guys agree. Of Daniel Bryan, covered by Reigns, Reigns pins both men to retain the title. And even when the odds are against me, and even when I start an audio recording a little bit too much like Macho Man, I can still pin all three in one attack. I mean, boom. Acknowledge me. Oh, President Kim was itinerary. That's very handy. I start fighting my way through the power plant and it's yeah it's not it's not too difficult. I make my way to Oliver's compound and finally I'm faced with the final boss. But not the rock, just the final boss of this playthrough. Cody Rhodes, I mean General Lee Oliver. These veteran NCR Rangers here, these Seth Rollins and Jay Usos, are not enough to stop the tribal chief on his final charge. To retain the Universal Championship. I mean to retain Hoover Dam. And as you can see, I come in here. And I'm not even going to touch Cody Rhodes. I'm just going to wipe out all the heavy troopers first. So I can get me and Lee Oliver. Just together. Just me and him. No interference. So I can finish him off just myself. He puts up a good fight. But I take all my throwing spears. He takes one to the forehead, pretty strong. But the second one, he takes that like a champ. That's two spears. But the third one, I'm finally able to take out Cody Rhodes. This heavy trooper really spoils the moment. But I'm finally able to come here and pin Oliver. One, two, three. Acknowledge 
me. Acknowledge your tribal chief. Brickmakers! Acknowledge me. And with that, we indeed answer the question. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as Roman Reigns, the tribal chief? Yes, indeedy. With the, the ending cutscenes as well, it lets you know that the great cans went off to the somewhere else, the west, somewhere else, and created a great empire with Roman Reigns as its tribal chief. It also mentions that the Legate becomes a Caesar, and eh, you don't need to listen to that part. That part's made up. That's just, that's fake news. It's not true. It's propaganda from Cody Rhodes. It's, don't believe it. But if you guys have enjoyed this video, um, I would greatly appreciate a like, because this was a lot of fun to make. It's something that I wanted to get done for WrestleMania weekend. It's a video that I've been working on for a good amount of time here. And in terms of how I wanted to present it, a bit more animated, a bit louder. Um, no, I, I've seen the comment a few times of, uh, sounds like his parents are sleeping next door. And uh, it's, 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 not, it's not too far away from the truth, but I, I've got a, a free house today. So I was able to put a lot more uh, passion into the, into the speaking. If you guys are watching WrestleMania this weekend, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear. Let me know who you want to win. Let me know if you're uh, if you've got any predictions, any surprise predictions. I'll be watching. Um, and yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to showing you in the next video. Also, I just wanted to quickly add here at the end: uh, if you read my post about starting a Discord, uh, maybe a mini podcast kind of thing, let me know what you guys think of that. Um, I'd love to get some more guys feedback uh, I feel like a lot of people didn't see the post uh, the guys that did reply and liked it thank you a lot I do appreciate it um, but if you got this far in the video leave a comment down below what you think of that kind of stuff and uh, yeah I appreciate you guys understanding and I hope you guys have a great week believe that